And then all of a sudden, I go out there after Carl's on the team. We get on a team together. And I'm like, he's like, man, I don't know how to say this, but my life is so much easier. I get home earlier and the horses all, their feet look better. Well, that's the goal. We're, there's not supposed to be, this is not all about you guys like going and whipping yourself with the rosary beads and just doing stuff terrible so you feel bad and then like, oh, I've been bad to horses. It's supposed to be simplistic. You're supposed to do exactly what's right for a horse. No one in here is telling you that you need that a handmade shoe is better than a keg shoe. But we're getting to the point where people are talking about shoes not even being good. People are talking about, like, they got to be carbon fiber. they got to be some deal that it, it doesn't make any sense because what I've seen tried and true and what the people and the fruit that we receive from this group has been nothing but the opposite. It's been about traditional methods work. They're affordable for the blue collar people or they can be affordable for ultra rich people. But I'm just saying that we're, the, the values are coming under attack and it comes from one reason, one reason only, lack of skill. If you do not possess skills, you do not have yourself with your own destiny and you can't make your own decisions. I guarantee you, if, if someone came up to Robert Jukes and he said, well, I put toe clips on only, and they said, well, we'd really like you to put side clips on, I guarantee you can do it. You know why? Because he's got skill. The bottom line, he's got skill and he can do it. And that, and it's like, you, you post a lot of stuff and your message is always about, well, just do the right thing. Well, it's because it's skill and you have to have common sense and you have to have, because Coke is hot. We, what we got is the cave-in. When you have, think about a pylon, a road cone, a road cone. The fire's like a road cone. It goes in the top and it works its way out. The whole secret to making a shoe is to find, if you want immediate heat, you need to find the center. I find the center of my fire. Use the, the poker. I would say this is the center of the fire. To work two shoes, what people don't realize is when one is getting hot, you're working on the amber. And so what you want to do is have the fire to where the fire is not working as fast as you are. If the fire is working faster than you are, then what happens is you burn your steel. So the whole goal is the air gate. If you have the air gate wide open, you better be working fast. And if you don't, so we don't want to mess with the air gate because it's the ping pang effect. As soon as you start slapping the, the air gate shut, then your next heat, it feels the, the effects of that because now you don't have hot steel. If you don't have hot steel, now you're not in the rhythm. What I'm saying right now is this piece, when I pulled it out, I knew that I was in the center, right? So when you stick your steel in the fire, if I stick both in there and I pull this out and I think I think that the fire is too far back, then I already know that I need to pull this one out a little bit and then go back in even with that so they're both even. Does that make sense? And that way you always know where your center beam is and that way you, you've got a pretty good idea. You know, they're recyclers, so I always like to recycle. That's called bumping the toe because you can reset. All right, a little bit of material in the toe, and then behind. Fire maintenance, fast.
and you might as well just get used to it and start wrecking it. I, we got really, really, really good speakers. What I'll do is I'll get on the microphone out there and tell everybody when there's a lecture start. If you want to come see it, fine. If not, no hard feelings. I didn't mean to sound condescending on not knowing what we don't know, but I guarantee you one thing. It still is what we all got to get better at. And, and, and you've seen it. You've seen people who are on the pinnacle of it. I will say, I wish when I was taking my certification test that the pre-certification process was out and about because this is so, so much of a big help to you if you are looking to take your certification test. Like you can do a pre-run trial run beforehand and learn where you need to improve before you go and spend that money and commit yourself to taking that test. This pre-certification exam test portion, this is super helpful for anybody that's looking to take their certification test. And I'm going to kind of see if he executes that plan. And as he goes along, um, kind of help him, kind of help him through this. This isn't saying, hey, guys, this is what the certification is. Like, you're going to get that. But mostly this is, this is what pre-certification is. This is what, like, Fred's is not selling you a product. It's not selling you, it's selling you anything. We all. We're selling you proper preparation. So we're trying to help you prepare correctly so you don't have a job on audit. Right? For years, AFA certification was a job on audit. It was, well, I'm going to have to go and see how it goes. We don't have that anymore. Now we have to do so. We have a fairly standardized system that we can help you get prepared show up and have the best chance of success. I'm going to say the question that I want to ask. I know the super broad coat. I don't think that there's a lot of sold depth. Not a lot of sold depth. I think it's kind of towed in. It seems like an older horse. He is kind of towed in. I don't really want to, I'm not really going to want to trip a lot of it. right? I'm not I'm sure. Sure. Bring this back into where it should be and kind of leave this alone. Yep. So if you leave it dirty, I'll know that you didn't touch it. Yeah. Okay, so if I see dirt on it, I know that it's not yours. It's the horse's. And that's not like if you leave big chunks of dirt, it's just that I don't see any too much. So one of the things that I can tell you that's it's not in the there's no rule against it. You can ask me about any of this stores. Right, so I, what do you think? I, what? I guess I don't know what the right answer is. The right, right question to ask. Okay. So, So now Levi is going to start the portion of the test where he can start trimming his feet. 
and you'll have to refer to the AFA certification booklet on the time allotted for the certification process but it's just like anything else you get a certain amount of time and then you call for your trim the judge will come in score your trim like they'll do here later and then just like anything else then they'll check the shoe fit and then fit and finish as well and it's a pass fail type deal basically if you get so many points then you then you pass if you don't get those points then you fail so it's pretty cool they're going through this whole process of and I've got to give props to Levi for sticking it out there and putting his work down in front of everybody to see and he is doing his best he can and he's starting out just like everybody else and learning doing it now and putting the effort forward good for him figured it'd be uh, worth saying that well there's lectures going on inside of the building you're welcome to go outside and step up to the trailer and there's 12 anvils available and then all the help you could ever need if you're looking for some help with something so inside they had the pre-certification demonstration going on and outside at the trailer everyone's just kind of getting the forge and fix in as the weekend kicked off and work with whoever you want to work with and if you're needing help with something you can ask somebody and they're more than likely willing to help you out so here we are we got Mason Molesky and uh, Daniel Russo just building a draft shoe creasing one out actually It's pretty cool to see everybody gathering around and there to help each other out. You know, a lot of these guys, this could be their first time meeting each other and they're stepping into an anvil and if you need help striking or something, be like, hey man, can you hit this creaser in for me? Or hey man, can you put this punch in for me? Everybody's more than likely going to be willing to do that and help you with your project. And it's also, say you haven't, you know, been a striker much and you want to learn how to use a sledgehammer this is a great place for it too because you have people that'll help you you know learn how to swing that sledge and know when to hit it hard and when to be gentle and not just pound it in there just like right now this is a delicate stage of when not to just blow that creaser down in there so you just want to gently coax it down in there so it's pretty damn cool just to see everybody just hanging out, helping each other out, and being there to get better, to improve that skill, as Craig pointed out earlier. Uh, if you hadn't gone after it, that would have got 
gotten down to like a quarter inch, right? You look at that stop, there's only a point. And no matter what, you need to get out that cedar corn a little bit. But the cedar corn is not, have its own cedar corn, that's not a stop. Come here, just like I showed you guys a while ago. I'm going to fit it in. It fits pretty good right there in the negative space, right? So I'll move it in just a little bit.
bums me out to say that my microphone decided not to work during the demonstration that Stan Mullen gave. And it's probably one of my favorite ones of the whole weekend. He went over basically journeyman bar shoe and having a system to simply go about that task. You know, it's not it's not the easiest task out there, but it's one of the basics that we should know and understand how to do. You know, building a bar shoe to fit a foot in a matter of time to become efficient. And Stan Mullen, he did a great job and he works really hard and this was a great great demo and I'm sorry that the microphone did not work during his demo. Most of y'all probably know this by now, but I'm a bulldog kind of guy. French bulldogs, English bulldogs, I love them both. But right next to them, they're starting off, about to kick off the uh, practice goes for the live, live shoeing and the tool forward for the Winter Classic that's coming up next month at the Spy Coast Farms. So here's uh, Aaron Lohman picking out his foot, trying to get it cleaned up. Beforehand, before the clock starts, you're allowed to wire brush it, pick it out, there, huh? clean it out the best that you can. You are not allowed to take your knives or any tool and sculpt away any foot before the clock starts. You can take a shoe that you've made before and put it on there just like you did to see if you're in the ballpark, but you're not allowed to actually physically take away any uh, part of the foot before the clock starts. I hear Tyson Clark who gathers some measurements on his foot. It's a dinky little foot, huh? I expect it a little smaller, so I'm, <laughs> I'm happy with what I got. It's a hell of a spade. Yeah. Dry foot, dry yeah. foot. Now we're over here, Stan Mullins checking the measurements on his foot to see what it measures. He's checking his width first, and then he's checking his length. So this is tool and fuller, so they start out with 5 8 square. You run it through a block, create a section, and then you crease through it and basically open it up. So it's paramount to get your measurement right because this is part of fit shearing. So we're going to gap it a half an hour. We got... Justin, J.A. Threat, from the front left, right? Charlie. Old J.A. We got Tony Mendoza on the, the anvil. And Logan Felix is striking. He's on the cat two yeah. team. All right, you're probably gonna hear a lot more of me throughout this video on the voiceover. My dang microphone just did not want to stay plugged in, but I'll kind of talk you along with what's going on here with old Matt Findler. He's got a pretty tough foot to shoe here. Uh, his foot's got a lot of like a uh, false sole, I guess you would call it. And he's just trying to find out how much foot to actually take off. It's pretty crazy. This is actually the foot Riley and I, when we did the Team PNW, this was the horse we did last year, so kind of know what this horse is like to shoe. She wasn't very much fun. They sedated it a few times, so he's doing a really good job keeping up with this horse. But he's just mostly just trying to sculpt his bars there. You now he's just cleaning up the heel. All right, now we'll scoot on over. Next horse over, we got Mason Molesky trimming up his the right front of his horse. And right now he's just kind of sculpting in the foot that he wants to trim off from the top on the peg. He's just focusing on that white line and just kind of the, the hoof wall, just trying to maintain the same wall thickness throughout. I, 
I would imagine. So he's just kind of carving it in there, just putting a bevel in. So now he's going to take it and go to the peg. So now he's taking it in a wire brush and just kind of wiring off the dirt that's on the wall football. It's kind of a doozy of a foot there. It's missing that big chunk right where the toe clip's going to go. So he's going to be pretty careful not to get too much into that. So now he's got his foot carved in from the bottom and he's going to take his rasp. And he's just going to file some of that hoof all out of there. Try to help get his shape and get rid of some of the distortion. So you want to make like a foot that's easier to fit when you make your shoe. But you also want to maintain, you know, a strong, healthy foot when doing that. Like you don't want to just carve in a really round foot on a horse that has like Tyson's where it was a spade. Like you're never going to make that a round foot. So I'll kind of take you through on what we are, they were having to put on the feet. So they were doing tool and fullard practice goes. So the front feet just get a hunter fit tool and fullard shoe, and then the hinds get a tool tool and fullard with a caulk and a wedge on it. So the fronts just have a hunter heel. So right here, they started out with five eight square, ran that steel through that block, and now they're going to use a splitter and split the section open. That's what's going to give the crease in there. This is the Canadian team here. So they're just starting out just getting a little bit of depth in there when it's in the straight versus cracking the toe so it's almost just like a concave section but it's just a bit more steeper and more true to a traditional horseshoeing so at this point he's just continuing to run that creaser down in through there trying to just get a little bit of depth in there and now he's just going to measure it try to find where he's got to put a center dot and essentially it's just making a regular horseshoe at this point you just started with something different, made it into a section, and now you're going to put it on a foot. So now we're going to creep over to the next anvil over, and we've actually got Mike Poe here on the anvil. Storm Myers, I believe, striking for him, so he's setting up. This is a hind shoe. It's got the wedge on the inside there, and then the other side is caulking, and that's going to be the outside. So he's just T-squaring it up where he's going to start the fuller in. And this, the fuller doesn't go all the way through the toe, and right here he's using a guide fuller to where it can put the crease down the center and there's no guessing to it. So now he's gonna start right there where the fuller is gonna end. And you can see that fuller, it's got two prongs on it, I guess you would call it, just to help line you up and make sure that you maintain, and not go too fine or too coarse with that section of tool and fuller. Cause that is the toughest part with these shoes. So it's going to go back one step. We got Reese here. He's actually turning the toe on his hind shoe. So he's doing the opposite foot there of Mike Poe. And it's a delicate thing. Like you have to be very delicate with your hammer. It's almost like a matter of like beauty and the beast with these shoes. Like it takes all the muscle to get that ran through the block, set up your wedge. And then now you just have to be very careful with your hammer and not get too heavy with it. I thought this was a pretty cool tool that Mike Poe had come up with, well, not necessarily come up with, but he was using. So he's got a block there that's got a little bit of steepness to it, or invert, and he's going to back his wedge up into it, just like you would, like a roadster wedge, but you can't, but you still, like, you can't go over the edge of the anvil, because then you're going to manipulate your section, and you're not going to get it backed up all the way down there, so it maintains the steepness of your section right in front of the wedge, so you can back it right up, and it's not going to distort it or scar it on the face of the anvil so I thought that was kind of a cool thing I wanted to include there and now this is the part where he's gonna start to use a splitter there so it's it's pretty narrow so that way you can get all the way down to the bottom throughout your section and then you'll come in afterwards with a little bit of a wider creaser so it's gonna take a couple passes here with a real narrow splitter and just crease it down into the bottom because if you come in with there's a real wide fuller from the beginning it's just going to blow it out and you, it's just going to be a really wide. You'll see a lot of guys start to hot rasp on their wedges or their shoes when they're still in the boomerang here. And the reason for that being is you can get in there with your file and help create lines a lot easier without that quarter bend in there with your shoes. So that way, because it's still a delicate shoe, so you're barely just banging it around. Like you're not doing any heavy forging like as if it was like a half by one roadster. So here he's just trying to rasp up his wedge the best he can, you know, to establish what it's going to look like. And then when he goes to fit it, then you can rasp in like a heel check if you need to, if you didn't get in your uh, with the hammer. 
So now he's just getting that wedge, trying to get the back slope because you want that to mimic the angle of the heel or the heel slope because it's a hunter fit on the inside. And here's the beginning of what it's like to draw or create your section. So you've got the 5 8 square right there, and you got Mike on the sledge, and you're just forging that into that block just to fill the void, basically, essentially. And now he's just going to kind of square it up a little bit, get rid of some of that flashing. And now he's tending to his shoe in the fire because he's going to be next on the anvil. So you want to try to time that correctly. So by the time we get done here with Mike's shoe that he's forging in there in the block, <clears throat> he'll be able to just grab his and it'll be ready to go. So you use the brush it a little bit, get some of that slag nastiness off there, come in with a flatter and just flatten the top of it and get an even blow from the sledge and bada bing bada boom now Mike he's doing the lateral branch of his shoe and he's got the block set up as well and it's got a little bit of a, a V shape to it so it can help put it in line of travel versus going over the anvil square so he can still maintain the section in front of that caulk and he can back up his heel caulk to it so it'll put it in line of travel and that's like a hard thing to do with these shoes you know, you're essentially still hitting it the same on the inside and outside when you're forging it there. But for backing it up like this, having that little notch or that V in there in that block, that's like a huge help. I kind of wish I would have had me one of them. Now you just forge it down flat in front of it and it hasn't wrecked the section at all. Like that is a very handy tool. Brush some slag off of it and I bet they're going to go in here now and use the splitter and split it open a little bit more. Just the same as they did on the inside. And move on and you'll probably go rasp it up right after this now we'll kind of move on and this is actually going back to Matt Finler's foot we got the judges coming in and they're judging Matt's trim I kind of wish I could have been a little bit closer to hear what exactly the judges were saying they like something about it and they're just kind of going back and forth this is Bodie Turnker judging there and Ian Ritchie they're not actually the judges for the classic they're just filling in because it's Nigel Fennell and another fella, and they weren't able to make it this weekend. So now they're both just going over the scores on Matt's foot. Now we've moved over to the other side of the trailer where the other group has started their go, and this is Stan Mullen trimming the left front of his horse, and he's a current, uh, he was the national champ last year, and he's on the current WCB team for this year. So he's starting in trimming up his frog, and they had a pretty tough tough horse, tough draw of feet. Like, um, not a ton of depth going on there, and the shoe, shoeing job previously, like, it was just dubbed off in the front half of that foot. So it was a pretty tough one to uh, have them try and trim this up well. So now he's just going to start knifing out some of that sole, try to find and distinguish that depth. So basically, like, he got the apex of his frog trimmed up there to figure out how much sole he can take out of this and just trying to make it as smooth as possible and trying not to get, you know, too big of chunks so that he has scallop marks in that foot. So you just want to make nice overlapping, I don't know, swipes with your knife. Kind of sculpt up the bar. Stan's a handyman. And I really wish I would have had audio coming through, but you're going to get to listen to me. So now he's going to trim up the other side of that frog, the lateral aspect. This is a big thing to distinguish how much depth is actually on that foot. Like when you get that tr frog trimmed up, that'll be able to tell you how much more sole and length you can take off. And you don't want to take them too short, but you don't also don't want to leave the foot too long because that's going to hurt you and your scores as well for you in the scores and it's not the best thing for the horse so ultimately that is the goal is to help the horse we're just trying to improve on the basics and enhance our shoeing abilities by you know making the nicest shoes possible you know hunter shoeing traditional hunter shoeing with caulk and wedges like that goes way back you know to early days of horseshoeing so you're we're trying to improve on the basics and doing the best we can and by doing that you can also put in flash and style in your shoes as well. You know, a good shoeing job, you know, if you have all the basics there, that's going to score well. If you have all the basics and the shoes pretty, like that's going to go give you a lot of points. And that's what we like to try to do. 
So it looks like Stan's pretty much done knifing out his foot at this point, and he's going to sight that foot and that limb, you know, try to figure out now he's going to get to the point where he's going to nip off some of the length of this foot. So he's going to start at the heels. So we've already kind of distinguished in the beginning, like the toe had been dubbed off previously. No need to nip off any more length off that toe. You can kind of get in there just with the rasp, kind of like what he's going to do right now. So he's just filing down that heel and that quarter just a little bit. So he's not committing himself too much in the beginning. You know, he's just kind of laying out the groundwork just to get it to the point where he's getting the length off there. And then he'll be able to fine tune that trim and get it laser flat. So he's just kind of taking out the high spots right now, essentially. And then down the road throughout the course of this, he's going to fine tune it and really blend in the high spots with the low spots and create a flat foot and try to enhance it, you know. Now Stan's kind of at the point where he's just trying to blend everything in. I thought this was cool. Like he takes his rasp there and he's trying to square up that foot. And I wish I would have asked him, but I imagine he's just trying to make it so that the heels are across from each other and not one too high or too low from each other. And now he's just going to try and get that foot as flat as he can. The horse tried to pull away just a little bit. You know, it's just ever so slightly just taking off just a little bit here and there. Not getting too crazy and making too big of moves with his rasp. You know, he's just a little bit at a time trying to get that flat. But you also have to try and be precise and efficient because you have three other guys waiting on you and you don't want to hold up too much of the uh, time on your go. Here we got Dusty Franklin. He's trimming up the left front of his horse as well and he's just kind of putting on the final touches on his frog. You know, just trying to blend every line and make it look as best he can. You know, you also want to make it deliberate and not, you know, too many different lines. Like, you want it all just to flow. You just put in some final touches there on the bar and in the seat of the corns. You know, just trying to enhance the back half of that foot and just make those bars appear to be strong. And, you know, he's knifed out that foot. The whole plane of that sole is nice and smooth as if you were just come through with one fail swoop and that would be the end product. You know, that's what you're looking for when you're trimming feet. You know, it's one nice, smooth plane and make it look as if we had never been there with a hoof knife trimming that foot. This is the top side of Stan Mullen's foot that we were talking about. You can see right there at the front half and the bottom of that where it's been dubbed off. So he's intentionally, he's not touching that with his rasp. Kind of that was talked before in the pre-cert part. If it's dirty, that means you didn't touch it. So if you leave it dirty, that means you did not own that. You know, so he's rasping everything else except where it's been dubbed off and t more foot has been taken off previously. So that is not going to hurt him in his scores, and it's going to show the judges that he was deliberate by not getting into that area right there at the bottom where that shoe had been previously dubbed off or that foot's been dubbed off previously. So he's just trying to make it as smooth as possible. No rasp marks. That's a huge thing. All right, we'll take you back to the anvil, and here we got Carl Via. He's turning the toe, or he's got the toe turned on his hind shoe already, but now he's just going to, you know, put it into the final shape that, not necessarily final shape, but he's just getting a nice toe in there, something that's going to be, that's going to fit that foot that he's trimmed. And you can kind of see he's not having to hit it very hard. He's just, you know, tapping it along, you know, trying to get it to where it needs to be. You know, that's the big thing with these shoes is just, not over forging them it's so easy to do so here he's just you know, getting a nice shape in there being delicate with it brush it off a little bit now he's going to flatten out that toe now he's going to grab he's actually using calipers to set up where he's going to start the fullering so he's got a striker troy wood there now you can see that um the guide fuller is what it's called where it's got the crease that comes right down the center and it's got the little line on the outside of that fuller so it helps guide it in there straight down the middle of that section not too coarse or too fine it's an interesting tool the guide fuller so there's troy wood striking for him he, these guys are the current wcb team so same as before with mike poe this is carl via now he's doing his caulking or his lateral branch on his shoe. And he's got a block that's set up. You can see the V in it. So now he can back that caulk up and start to put it in line of travel. So flatten out, clean that edge up. Now 
It's kind of the same move as a regular caulk where you can hit the top of the inside and bottom of the outside. So now he's going to hit the bottom of that outside, forge it down, trying to make a better foot bearing surface there. Now he's just trying to forge a nice heel caulk. You know, these caulks, they have a wider front and then they taper to a narrow back. So here you can back it up some more right into that V, keep that caulk in line of travel. Now just clean up the section just a little bit. Foot bearing, that's important. You want a nice bearing surface because you don't want the foot to be hanging off or not be fit. So you want to have a nice strong foot bearing surface. Now he's just getting his caulk finished up by one of the best in the business, Carl Vi. All right, now we're going to go to a front foot or shoe. This is Stan Mullen with Daniel Russo striking for him. They're going to hit that splitter down just in a little bit just to get a little bit of depth in there. It's easier to make your lines when it's in the straight like that in the boomerang. Now he can put his, turn his branch, put some quarter into it. You know, flatten it out a little bit. Now he's just going to shape it a little bit more. Use that horn. You can see these heels, they have a slope on them or a taper. That's hunter fit, so that's got to be hit right, or it's got to be fit right to the end of the heel. So now he's got a little bit of a wider creaser, so he's using his splitter already where he's gotten it down in there. Now this creaser is going to go down, open it up, so that way you can get a nail in there and have a nail fit in nice. Whereas that splitter just gets it down to the bottom, so that way you just don't have too much blowout and distortion. So now he's going to come in and put some toenails in. Now he's going to do his heel nail, which is going to be at the widest part of that foot. You can see how much he's pitching that nail. He's trying to match the angle of that hoof wall with the pitch of his punch right here. Now he's going to back, forge the backside a little bit. You can see them how it's made the bottom. It's got shiny round spots. Now he's going to forge out some frog eyes on the horn. And he's got a pritchel there, so then he can just come in. Do one smack, bottom out that pritchel, and boom. Pritchel it out, make a nice slug. So one blow with the hammer, and that's enough to pritchel out your nail hole. See how delicate he's being there with his hammer, trying to get that pritchel out. You don't want to put any scar marks in the top side. Now here we go again. A little bit more judging, so they're going to judge the right front of that horse of the WCB team. This is the one that Troy Wood did. So he's got Bodie Turnka coming in there first. He's going to sight that foot check it out I imagine he's checking for flat right now and it's kind of hard to get a real good trim score when they're shooing right here on the rock so it's gonna appear as if the work's not as great so that's kind of a tough thing and I imagine the judges have that in mind you know when they're looking over the uh, overall finish of their uh, sole there and the prep the hoof prep you know because the gravel is gonna put some marks in there so now they're just going to kind of go back and forth. Now they're going to sight it from the top side and just kind of see if there's any distortion going on. Sorry about my camera angle there, just straight butt. So now Ian's coming in and he's going to evaluate it. He's checking it for flat, sighting it down. Looks like a pretty nice, nicely prepped foot there for what they had. So now they're going to kind of deliberate back and forth. I wonder if they're kind of going by what was rasp off what's intentional or if they should have done more so be curious to I'll have to ask Troy what the scores were so now Bodie's gonna come in again now the horse is gonna be a little stubborn there he goes sighting it for flat I imagine they're deliberating back and forth that the foot was flat enough you know they're kinda going back and forth over minute details like it's not gonna be a big thing so here they are going back and forth on what the score is going to be. They got a scriber there. All right, so a little bit of time has elapsed, and now we're going back to the left front here with Stan Mullen. He's got his shoe built. Now he's going to come in and check it out for fit. How does it fit? So the first thing I imagine he's going to do is try to get that toe clip burned in there and see he, do, he doesn't have a ton of heat on that shoe right now. He's just kind of trying to see if he's in the ballpark. So just getting a quick look. So we're coming back here to the anvil. So Stan there, he took a quick look at that foot on his shoe to see. So he's going to make some alt alterations to that shape of that shoe. So he's got a little bit of heat in there. He doesn't have a ton of heat, just enough to kind of shape it around a little bit. So he's just gently tapping it. You know, his whole shoe is built already, so he doesn't want to ruin it. 
So I was just, just putting a little bit of a different shape in there so we can go to that foot here in a second and actually burn in that clip. I'd also like to point out how much he's focusing on making sure that shoe is flat before he goes and burns it. So he checked it there, made sure it was flat. It's a big thing. You have a flat shoe when you go to burn it on. Here we are, Stan's picking up his foot, about to check to make sure that shoe fits. Now he's got a little bit more heat in there so he can actually get that clip burned in, make sure that shoe fits. This horse is kind of being a little jumpy with the smoke. Stan's a big boy. He can hang on. Now he's just trying to calm it down just a little bit. Well, giving him some grief. He can handle it. Now he's trying to get it burnt in a little bit more. So he's checking it. He's going to go back and change the shape just a little bit. And just like that, my mic decided to start working again. And we got a little bit of audio here for the uh, anvil. So we got Tyson Clark and Robert Jukes. Robert's doing the front foot of a horse. So they're going to take that 5 8 square and they're going to run it through the block. He started out at the beginning and just took the edges off to try and um, make that heel go a little bit better. So now they're just going to forge that down and create their section. Now here we got Dusty Franklin coming in. He's checking to make sure his shoe fits. He's going to start getting a slight burn on there, making sure that clip is lined up center in the line with the frog. So he's going to come in here with his knife. Now he's going to knife out just a little bit of that hoof wall. Didn't have to take too much. So now he's going to burn just a little bit more. Same time, he's checking to make sure it fits. Now he's basically got solid contact. This guy's going to come in and press just a little bit on that inside heel. So he's got almost a full even burn. Now he's checking the fit again. He's going to go back and shape it just a little bit. Now we're coming back in with a little bit more hoof prep. A little bit more hoof trimming here by Carl Vaya. And he's doing the right hind of this horse. So right there you can see him getting in there, sculpting up that bar. You know, just right in front of it. Nice and easy. There, see how strong that bar looks now? So basically what you do is just you knife out in front of it. Don't touch that bar if you want to leave it in there. Just helps distinguish some more lines in the foot. But it's also, you know, leaving the integrity of the hoof wall because the bars are just essentially an extension of the hoof wall. So now he's just making smooth swipes with his knife there, trying to create a nice smooth plane. So here he's kicking them out. Stan's coming in for another burn. Imagine this is probably close to Stan's final burn, maybe. Well, he's got a little bit of heat on there, so now he's going to get that clip burned in there real good. I think they didn't knife out too much because the way that toe was dubbed off, you almost want that shoe just to be in front of it just ever so slightly because that hoof ball should be out there in front, but it's not because it had been taken away. And you can see the slope of that heel of the shoe is just right there with the angle of the heel coming down. So now Carl is going to come back in, stands left, and he's going to pick that foot back up. And he's going to go back to trimming it some more. Imagine he's going to side it there. Yep, checking it for flat just a little bit. So that way he knows where to rasp it off. So he's going to start at the toe. Basically when you're making feet flat, you're just blending the high spots in with the low spots. You know? There wasn't so much foot there that he had to nip, I don't think. Or he might have nipped a little bit there on the inside, but... Those Heller rasps there, the green tang, those are some of the best in the business. The fine side, when you go to finish up foot, you know, leaves a nice, smooth plane. You know, almost like glass, I'd say. So here he is, just kind of cleaning up the back half of that foot, trying to make a nice, smooth, clean quarter, something that's not so hooky. And this is kind of a tough foot. You know, he's got a higher lateral quarter and a lower inside quarter. So right there, he's just trying to get the hook out of that, that heel quarter. So that way, when he gets a shoe on there, it flows nice. So here he is, blending in the hoof wall at that medial toe. He's maintaining... Uh, uniform wall thickness right through there but he also is trying to keep it bold 
so it's nice and easy to fit, but still strong, strong foot. So there he is, just kind of putting some shapes in. So he's getting kicked off again, so Stan's coming back in. He's going to get another burn, see how his shoe fits. One last burn. Yeah. He's got full contact. Horse kind of trying to pull away just a little bit. Some horses don't like the the smell and the look of the smoke. There he is. So now we're coming back here to Dusty Franklin. He's going to go in for a burn again. So he's kind of checking to make sure his shoe is spot on. Look how sweet he's got that medial heel rasped up. It just fit right on the money with that, that heel. Man, that looks pretty dang sweet. Spot on. Not too much length. It's not short. That is traditional hunter shoeing right there. So we're going to come back over here to Carl Via. He's got his foot trimmed. Now he's coming in to burn his shoe on and make sure it fits. So the first thing he does, he gets a slight burn on there, and he's going to come in and knife out his clip. Start at the top, works his way to the bottom. Clips are meant to be burned in with the hoof wall and flush. So just a little bit of burn marks where it's at, and then you can take your knife. You can just knife out a little bit of hoof wall there. So now he's going to come in, burn it again, check his fit. Looking pretty dang sweet. Now we'll come over to the right front of the horse. we got Troy Wood coming in. Just kind of get away some of them harsh edges that that gravel creates by setting it down every time after you burn. Or actually, he's still burning. So there's his shoe. Dang, that looks nice. So now he's going to come in for a burn. He's got his clip burned in. Now I bet he's just looking for length, making sure that it fits right. Yeah, you can see where that toe has been dubbed off and that shoe's just ever so slightly out in front of there, which is all right for this, this case. He's going to relieve a little bit of sole pressure there with his knife. Clean up that bar. He's trying to do, doesn't need a lot. Now he's checking it for fit, making sure he's spot on. Doesn't need a ton of heat at this moment. Yeah. The whole shoe flows, matches that foot. I was just gonna take, see look at it, right off the edge of that heel. That is Hunter shoeing right there. That is looking good. So now we'll let Carl back in. This is that team environment, just getting in the flow of it, knowing when you can take your turn. So now he's gonna, doesn't have a ton of heat, so we can just let it sit on there. And he's just looking, checking to make sure it fits. There's a little discrepancy online saying that was short on the inside, but you can see right there it fits. That fits nice. So I bet Stan's going to come in and he's going to start nailing up. I think he's sighting it, make sure that his clip is... Or no, actually he's got a few nails in there, so he's looking to align and make sure that his nails are all evenly... You know, you want to start higher at the toenail and just slowly descend to the heel nail. Or if you go straight across, it's just fine as well. So yeah, he's just checking to make sure that his nails... I think there was like an old nail hole right there, and he's trying to decipher where to place that to get away from it. So now he's going to come in with his nail. Yep, right there's an old nail hole he's trying to battle. I remember watching him, and it kind of took a little bit, but... Thankfully, he had the time to try and get it in there. Now he's going to pull back out, grab another nail, try again. Yeah, let's get up in here a little bit more up close and personal, get in his space here. So he's going to rip that nail out. He wasn't too happy with it. Imagine it was either too high or too low. Let's see what he does with this nail. I think it was just a little high. So now he's going to bend the tip of it so it'll come out a little bit sooner. So now get it drove in there. There you go. Now he's happy with it. Nice. Now we're coming over, we got Dusty Franklin, he's got his foot, and then he's going to start finishing up. So he's got his gouge there, so coming in just right underneath the nail, and you're creating just a little pocket for that nail to sit in to create your clinch. So now he's just going to rasp the top of that nail just a little bit, just to get it to the final length desirable. Ever so slightly, doesn't need a ton. So now he's going to come in, he's going to grab some clinchers. Pull down and you push in. Pull down, push in. Pull down, push in. You don't want to keep pulling it down because that's just going to create a lot of drag. And you'll see that at the top of that nail, that line, 
just right there where it was, you'll see that it'll get elongated, and then you just drug it down too much. So now, just one, two, three, four, five, six swipes, and that's already smooth. So he's just going to take off when it's fit well. So he's just going to clean up his clip right there and make it shiny. He's not rasping away a hoof wall because he actually he fit that foot really nice. So he's just taking away a little bit. Now he's going to come in and we call it the quartermaster crease. And it's kind of a weird term, but where you take your rasp and you just go along the edge of the uh, the shoe and the foot. The quartermaster crease. So there he's just trying to make sure he got his clip nice and shiny. Oh, horse decided to pull back just a little bit. Put it back up there. So now you're going to rasp right underneath the nail. Get rid of that little bit of hoof wall. Rasp the top. Get it to the final desired length. He's going to come grab his gouge. So push in, pull up. Push in, pull up. And that's just creating a nice little pocket there for the nail and to create a nice strong clinch. Same thing again. Clinchers. Pull down, pull down, push in. Now he's just kind of pushing it in. Drag down, push in. Sweet. A nice strong clinch makes a big difference. So just a few swipes on the top of it. And then it's flush with the hoof wall. And that's when you know you got a nice strong clinch. Yeah, Same thing. Just trying to get away just a little bit of the rasp marks, I think. There wasn't very many. Then you come in the quartermaster crease right there. Finish it off. And the next thing he does, he uh, he's going to grab some sandpaper and sand that thing down. I think you start with 120. And I think they worked all the way up to 3,000. So now he's just going to sand away and make that thing shine I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because this is just the same thing over and over just multiple different grits Now we're going to take it back to old Troy Wood here. He's nailing up his shoe. Trying to get those nails just spiked up there just right. It's a finicky thing when you're underneath the clock and you're trying to, you know, be very precise, but you're also, you know, trying to be deliberate and use speed at the same time. It takes concentration, but also just doing it over and over so that way, you know, you're prepared. Oh, now he's going to have to pull out another nail. I think that one might be coming out a little low. Oh, it might have been a little high, so he's putting a little pitch on that nail so it'll come out a little sm sooner. Basically what that means by putting a little bit more pitch on the nail, you're just bending the tip of the nail ever so slightly so that way it'll come out just a little bit sooner. Yeah, he's trying to get it to come out lower, I think. Just a little high, maybe. I think he might be happy with it. So now he's going to get it, both of them set down in there. Looking pretty sweet. Now the clock has stopped and both goes are done. Now everybody's getting together and, you know, looking at each other's work that they just put down. This is Matt Finler's foot right here that he won best shot foot on it. And this is the cool thing that people don't really know from the outside is we're not putting each other down. We're getting together. We're picking it apart so that way we can become better so this is Johnny Dixon's foot it's a pretty sweet job looks like it fits pretty dang good that's nice not a huge fan of the caulk in there being straight with branch but to each their own you know so now uh, we'll go up to the front foot here this is the Canadian team putting it. 
That's Russell Floyd's foot. Mason trying to get it picked up for me. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, look at that heel fit. It's pretty dang nice. Looks like it's a little bit outside there on the lateral branch, you know, for the center of the heel, but them bars are sculpted up nice. It's a nice trim foot. It's a nice shoeing job. Now we're going to pick up the left front of that same horse on the Canadian team. Caleb, he trimmed that foot or did that job. Mason trying to clean it out for me. Thank you. Yeah, it looks pretty dang nice. A little bit of rasp marks in the shoe. Overall finish could be just a little bit nicer, but... You know, when you're underneath the clock, it kind of looks like it's a little long medially, just from what I can see, but I could be very well wrong. So now he's going to come in and grab uh, the left hind, or the right, yeah, left hind, I mean. This is Matt Finley's job right here. This is the one he won best shot foot with. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. You can see that caulk is in line of travel. It's a hard foot. That frog being nasty like that. Got a nice wedge on there. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. It's a good job. It's a hard foot to do. Killed it. We're going to go over the next horse. This is the foot Robert Jukes did. And these were some tough feet to shoe, and these guys killed it. Like, that foot was basically a spade for a front. Like, he trimmed it really nice. You can see the overall finish, like that clip fit. Nice. Look at them bars. It almost looks like it's a little bit racked coming down on the medial side, but... That's just the way that foot is. It's hard to hard to do with it being so out and around. So this is Tyson's Tyson Clark's foot that we saw previously, that big old spade. Man, that's that's pretty dang nice. I like that. A little bit low on the medial side there where the uh, fullerin starts, but I think that's just the shape of that foot. But it's a hard one to fit and hard one to make with a tight toe and come way out to them quarters. And then... We'll come up here to the uh, left front, Jake Yeninguez. I can't pronounce his last name very well, but this was a very tough foot. Like the lateral toe quarter right there, it has a big old dip in it. So he, that's why he left that nail out right there. See that big old dip in that toe? So that's why he did that. He wasn't too terribly happy about it, but you win some, you lose some, you know. And this is the reason why we do this, to learn and to get better. So now uh, Marcus is going to pick up his foot that he did, Marcus Appleyard. Yeah, he's he did a pretty good job as well. He said he wasn't too happy with it, but in the time allotted, I think he did a pretty dang good job. My biggest critique would be those knife marks after he burned and finished it that stands out like a sore thumb, but overall, great job, Marcus. Now this next horse is the team. I believe they went with the name Tex-Mex. So this is Chase's foot. A pretty elongated, narrow type foot. Those ones are very tough to do. I think this is harder than a spade, but yeah, it looks pretty dang nice. I'd be happy with that. This is Chris Madrid's foot. So he's the, the Mex, the New Mexico and the Tex-Mex. Oh man, this is a tough foot too. Not really any big quarter in it or anything, but he did a nice job. Look at that clip fit. That's nice. Very nice job. So the next foot is going to be Mike Stone on the right hind. Yeah, and if you've ever been around Mike Stone, he's a character. He's super fun. Do some. He's a foot trimming son of a gun too. Like he can trim some nice feet. So now we'll go up to the uh, right front. I think this is Wesson Newsom. And Wesson, he's a great guy. He's been trying real hard lately. This looks like a pretty nice job. Kind of a hard foot to do as well. You know, no real big definition in it, but man, that fit and finish on the outside, that looks nice. Nice and shiny like a bowling ball. Nice job, guys. Now we're going to come over here with the WCB team. This is Daniel Russo's foot there, and he's the newest member on the team this year. And let's look at that keel call. That is pretty dang nice. Straight across, in line of travel. Looks like a pretty dang sweet section. Nice shaped foot, too. So now we'll go over here to the uh, left front, Stan Mullen's foot that we kind of watched throughout this video. National champ. Yeah, that's cool. You can see those heels fit right there to the end. And still, they pooched it out just out there in front ever so slightly like it should be because that was dubbed off. 
So now we'll go over to Carl's foot. Yeah, that's pretty dang sick. Look at that night, that caulk. Oh, that's perfect. Nicely trimmed foot. Clean shoe. Nice clip fit. Didn't need six nails into it. Not that big of a foot. That's perfect. I like that a lot. So we'll go up here to the right front. Old Troy Wood. Thanks for picking up some feet for me, Carl. Troy, this will be his second year on the WCB team. It's pretty sweet. Look at them heels. Nicely penciled up. I like that. Kind of looks like the full orange is inside ever so slightly, but yeah, they did a good job. A very good job. There's some tough feet to do as well. Now we'll come over to another horse. This is uh, Mason Molesky's foot that he did that we saw him top dress a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Looks just a little long inside. Not too much, though. It's a tough thing about two and fuller day and hunter fit like it can be off just by a 16th you know long so they're judging in Bodie they're right now they're judging fit and finish so they're just checking to see how the finish is so they're Ian is looking at clinches making sure that it uh they're not rough or you know poking out any they want to be nice and flush with the hoof wall when they're done that's going to wrap up all the shoeing goes from the previous day so now we're day three starting off the day with a demonstration by Riley Kirkpatrick right here he's building himself a wedge for a roadster out of half by one you'll notice you can hit it a little bit harder than what we're doing the day before with those uh, two and fuller wedges So now we're getting pretty close to the end of the video. Riley's gonna be doing a caulking on this half by one roadster. Right. 
after this demonstration, they had a demo by Tim Hoover, otherwise known as Hooter, who did a tong demonstration. But We had to fly out later that day, so we ended up leaving, and I wasn't able to... wasn't able to get the video of Hooter doing his tongue demo. Hope you guys liked this video. And this was the WCB Winter Clinic 2024 hosted at Wellshot in Amarillo, Texas. Thanks for watching everyone. Appreciate it. And let me know if you like the style of the voiceover throughout the video. Even though it came with uh, circumstances that my microphone wasn't wanting to work, but kind of like doing this as well and talking through it but let me know if you like this or not leave it in the comment thanks for watching everyone I just wanted to put the schedule out here there was a lot of demonstrations that I had missed and not wasn't able to include in this video because we were doing podcasts or out making horseshoes ourselves so just wanted to put this out there that there was actually much more that I didn't actually include in the video and if the winter clinic is an event that you want to go I would strongly recommend it we'll see you guys there at the next one